Oh, what's going on, Game Weeper? It's the Jizz, and in today's video, we're going to be going through the 15 most broken champions for the new patch 1124B. And in this countdown, there is no actual order here. I'm just going to name 15 champions, and you can decide in the comment section who you think is going to be the most broken. And just before we get into the countdown, I also want to tell you guys about the amazing Game Weep website and the heap of videos our challenger tier players and coaches upload on a regular basis. We're uploading up to 20 videos a week, and these are courses, these are guys, these are high low vod analyses designed to help you improve and become the best player you can be on the Rift. So if you want to maximize that potential, get signed up. The links are in the description and comment section. And let's get into the top 15 of 1124B. Now starting us off, we're going to talk about Kale. And no surprise to see because next patch, nothing is getting nerfed. So Kale with lethal tempo, if you're playing her in the mid and top lane, is going to be an absolute weapon. Thankfully, from 1124, the lethal tempo buff for range champ is staying. So you're getting 7% attack speed per stack. And even though you're losing a little bit of range when you get to max stacks, which is after six auto attacks, it doesn't really matter because you're going to be accessing that range sooner with the more attack speed. And once you get Nash's tooth, Rhythmaker, and then Rabadon's death cap, Kayla's honestly probably the scariest champion, especially in the late game. And speaking of late game carries, Vayne is also on this countdown. And to be honest, even though she's getting nerfed at 1124B, the nerf is pretty insignificant. You're going to be losing a bit of damage when you press your ultimate, but to be honest, who cares about this? Lethal Tempo is still going to be the same for ranged champions, just like Kayla. And for Vayne, because she is a short range champion, this really was a weakness, but with the new lethal tempo, it completely eradicates it. And the fact that Vayne has around a 53% win rate, you know, this champion is meant to be a high skill ceiling champ, but it seems these days that anyone can just pick Vayne and have a great chance of winning because she's that broken. So yes, she's getting nerfed, but to be honest, it really won't mean that much. And if we stay in the bot lane here and talk about Lux, now Lux not as an AP carry in the bot lane, but as a support. And just like Vayne, Lux is getting nerfed because she has one of the best win rates, just like Vayne. But what Ryder nerfing here probably isn't going to really change that much. So your Q, the cooldown is now going to be 11 seconds flat and the base damage is down at rank 2 onwards but you max this last so this really won't have that much of an impact and as a support Lux is all about using her E for poke and also her shield to protect her AD carry and lots of the other supports that have played at the moment and that are doing really well Lux does very well into because she outranges pretty much anyone and it can be really annoying to deal with her poke but one champion who might enjoy seeing Lux in the bot lane is Kiana in the mid lane because Lux is a very squishy support and very killable I mean what isn't killable for Kiana but ever since Prowler's Claw got buffed at 1120 even though Ghostblade got nerfed, so it's costing 3,000 gold, Kiana, especially when played by the best players in the world, still has around 54% win rates, and she is the standout AD assassin in the mid lane. With Prowler's Claw, the sand swipe active, dealing more damage, and also the cost is down 100 gold, and this has stayed the same since 1123, so she's still in a very good position, and you could also entertain the idea of running Axiom Arc as one of your major items, because it's going to decrease your ultimate's cooldown. And for a champion like Kiana, who has really good AoE with her ultimate, it should be pretty easy to get kills and assists with Without even knowing it. Now, another champion who's going to continue to do well in 1124B, this is Trundle in the jungle. Now, of course, you can play Trundle in the top lane with lethal tempo still because his Q can proc the stacking, but would press the attack in the jungle. Honestly, Trundle is probably the scariest early game jungler to run into. His 1v1 is so powerful, and even his ganks, you really have to respect. Also, the fact that Divine Sundra is not getting nerfed, and this is still going to be the best fighter Bruiser Mythic next patch. So, for Trundle, the fact that nothing is really changing, this is really nice, and he will for sure continue to be one of the premier junglers. Now let's head back to the bot lane and talk about another lethal tempo abuser, and this is Cogmore. And just like Vayne has an absurd win rate, but to be honest, it's probably more surprising for Cogmore because he's a pretty immobile AD carry. So the fact that he has such a good win rate around 52-53% in a meta where damage is so high, and you can get killed very easily. This just goes to show how powerful the new lethal tempo is. So when you pair the new lethal tempo with your bio arcane barrage, the range you have, the damage output, and once you actually do get the extra range from lethal tempo, because you can stand further away, away from the enemy champions, it's just making you safer. And when you consider the strong supports at the moment as well, so if we talk about Sona, for instance, or Soraka or Nami, these three supports are in this countdown as well. Their win rates are just too good to pass up on, and because next patch nothing is getting nerfed, you know, for Sona, Soraka or Nami, they have to be considered as some of the most OP champions. And when you have a hyperscaling AD carry next to you, like a Vayne or a Cogmore, when you're playing one of these enchantresses, you are so good at peeling the enemy champions off of your AD carry. So this Cogmore is going to hit the late game Vayne is going to hit the late game and they are going to pop off. And let me just say that at this moment in time, Sona has a 55% win rate. That is one of the highest win rates we have seen in a long time. And it's kind of funny how this stat stares you right in the face, but Ryder deciding to nerf a bunch of other things in 1124B. So what I'm saying is keep abusing these champions before the Rito Balance Team's radar turns onto these champs. Now, if we stay in the bot lane, we've got one more AD carry to talk about here for being one of the most broken champs in the game. And this is Draven. And the fact that Vayne and Cogmore are good instantly makes Draven's value go up because he's so 
good into these two champions during the laning phase. So by picking a lane dominant champion like Draven, who to be honest is uncontestable in the early game, it really denies late game scalers like Vayne and Cogmore from actually getting to the late game. And Draven is one of these AD carries who works with pretty much every support in the game. If you're playing Soraka, Sona or Nami, you can peel the enemy champions off of Draven so he's going to deal a ton of damage. Or if you have a hard engaged support, you can maybe run Conqueror or Lethal Tempo knowing you're going to get the stacking, so you might have a Leona support or a Nautilus support and you can synergize your ultimate with their CC, so he really works with any composition down in the bot lane. And just because you have three keystones at your disposal, so Hail of Blades, a Lethal Tempo and the new Conqueror which has been buffed so the stacking is lasting 5 seconds, Draven is in such a good position. Just like our next champion residing in the top lane, this is Urgot. And for the god, the fact that Press the Attack has remained untouched in the preseason and also the fact that the Q buff that came in towards the end of season 11, this is still here. And with the Titanic Hydra, the Cleave Passive that procs off of your Purge, so your W, which you are maxing first still, it's very hard for melee champions to even get close to you. And because in the top lane you're still going to be going against melee champions for the most part, Urgot is going to continue to be one of the scariest matchups. But maybe one champion in the top lane who can dominate Urgot, and still the champions that Urgot does well against, this is Quinn. And there are so many reasons why Quinn is going to be so broken in 1124B, so the fact that press the attack, the Keystone is in a really good position, so just like Urgot, this is a bonus. Now also, because Quinn is a ranged champion, it's very hard and annoying for melee champions to contest the minion wave and to even get close to Quinn. But let's say they do. Let's say they suddenly jump on your head. Well, what's your response? Well, you can just press your E and you recreate that space, they get slowed, and there's nothing they can do. It's so hard to stick to a Quinn, and this is why she's one of the most lane dominant top laners. And because your ultimate can take you across the map, you can transport your gold lead in the top lane and impress it across the rest of Summoner's Rift. So she's for sure going to be one of the best carry champions in 1124B. But maybe one jungler who's going to be as good or even better than Quinn next patch, this is Amumu. And the reason Amumu has really taken off in all elos, this isn't just in silver or bronze where people don't have their screens turned on, this is even in higher elos. And this is all down to the Conqueror buff from a couple of patches ago, so the stacking is lasting 5 seconds. Now for Amumu, this is the keystone that you should actually run, and this is really the reason behind his sudden increase in win rate across the board. And even though the nerf towards the end of season 11, so your Q is going to cost more mana, because in the early game when ganks really matter, you should always have your blue buff, and just the fact that you have two bandage tosses now for that gank, it makes it pretty much impossible for that enemy champion to escape. So there is no doubt that Amumu with Sunfire Aegis, which has been buffed recently, is going to be one of the strongest picks. And if we just stay in the jungle for a second, we also have to consider Ramus. Because just like Amumu, Ramus, even in high reelers where he might struggle because players know what's coming, is having so much success on the rift. The new turbo chem tank, which is giving you AoE on your auto attack, and when you pair this with Dead Man's Plate Shipwreck a passive, there is no way that someone is going to escape after you land your torn onto them. And for these two junglers, Amumu and Ramus, scuttle crap back in the day because it used to give you really good experience. In fact, the most out of any jungle camp. Well, now it's giving you barely any. So there's really not that much importance to 1v1 the enemy jungler and fight them over it, which is really what these junglers want. They're not the best at 1v1ing, but they're ganking. That's where they really shine. And because the jungle meta is pushing more towards that style of play, these two junglers are really popping off as a result of it. But the final champion, guys, we have to consider for being one of the most broken in 1124B resides in the mid lane. And this is Anivia. And ever since 1124, when Riot buffed Archangel Staff, so the cost is going down to 2600 gold, that's 400 gold cheaper. This is staying next patch. So this is a really big positive. And another one is the fact that you can really go any of the Mana Mage Mythics. You can get Everfrost if you're against a close range team composition. You can get Crown of the Shattered Queen if the enemy team has a lot of assassins or a pick comp. You can get Leandre's Anguish if they have a lot of tanks. And maybe you could even consider getting Luden's Tempest if you just want to one-shot people. So the options are endless for Anivia. And next patch, because nothing is going to change, these options are still going to be there, so she has to be on this countdown. So those are the 15 best champions, guys, for 1124B. Let me know in the comment section who you think is going to be the most broken. And if you did enjoy the video, remember to let us know by leaving a like down below. And also, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of our daily preseason content. And until tomorrow's daily upload, this has been The Jizz. Ooh.